Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video today. We're going to be going over the market a little bit early before the market closes. There's still just over half an hour, but I have something at four o'clock uh, Eastern, of course. So can record as the market closes but you know nonetheless this is giving us a pretty decent idea as to what is happening what we can expect going to next week in my opinion of course you know as usual if you enjoy don't forget to hit that like button none of this is financial advice make your own decisions do your own research blah 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 blah, blah. so tesla pretty much gonna be ending the day down about two percent we'll say roughly right most likely it'll end two percent roughly uh around 890 dollars so the most important thing is to note, guys, uh, first of all, obviously, there's a gap right above us sitting at, you know, nine oh eight dollars. I don't think it'll fill um, yet. It might actually still fill before we actually make our way down all the way. But pretty much what I'm seeing now at the moment is the fact that Tesla, as you can see, right, it did break below the red line. It came back up, pretty much tested the red line and uh, fell back under and most likely will close underneath this as well. So the easiest way to, uh, you know, I guess, talk about this, if you will, is yeah, it, it broke the trend. Uh, the trend seems to have been broken. Uh, obviously, we need to get a couple of days of confirmation of this. But uh, as of right now, it does seem like the uptrend has been broken and the downtrend, uh, decent chance it has begun. So also, looking at the SPY, you can see very similar thing here. And of course, the QQ, right? So, and the VIX is finally finding a little bit of a bounce, though it is getting kind of, you know, rejected over here as well. So we'll see what happens. We're in kind of like a still this weird limbo, though I do think this is going to be the overall turning point. Uh, even though the market can still potentially rip, like the SPY can potentially still come up to like test this breakout or something like that, right? You know, maybe up to like even 430 again, that is possible into a final like full rejection. That is definitely possible. But with that being said and done, I do believe that the downtrend has begun. So we'll see how far this downtrend goes. My first main target is going to be essentially this blue line, which uh, was kind of, you know, the thing that was giving us resistance before we really truly broke out up into the kind of, you know, high 800s to 900s level. Uh, as you can see, we've got several rejections here and then uh, treated it as support here and here. So I were personally, number one, uh, first target would easily be to come over down to around, you know, 840. 850 something like that maybe even next week most likely uh, and then most likely get a bounce off of that if this does give us some support and then we can maybe get a potential bounce so if that were to happen i would expect that let's say something like this give or take most likely potentially bounce up to somewhere around back into the high 800s uh, maybe even 900 again, and then, you know, potentially fall back down from there. So we'll obviously, you know, talk more about it when it happens, if it happens, and get a better idea as to how it can look. But yesterday was absolutely pitiful volume. Today's even quite pitiful volume as well. Not, probably not even going to reach 20 million, maybe just barely. So, you know, overall, nothing too crazy. It's pretty, you know, I don't know. It's like, even though it's a pretty red day, it's still kind of a boring day, in my opinion. Um, and also it is OPEX day, which means that, you know, there's a like a, a crazy amount of options that are essentially expiring today. Uh, and what that means also for Monday, so two things for Monday, like I said, I'm usually bearish on Fridays. And if Friday happens to be a bearish day, in this case, a red day, Monday tends to rhyme. Obviously, it's not the exact same, you know, percentage down, you know, as Friday was, but if Friday is red, Monday tends to be red as well. Not every single time, but again, maybe like six or seven out of 10 times. Um, it does kind of rhyme with Friday. So with that being said and done, I'm personally expecting Monday to be red. If it is red, I will be personally entering some bullish positions for the week. Uh, and if it's not, well, then we'll see what happens. Uh, then maybe Tuesday will be the day I'll enter. So, you know, obviously I'll assess it as it happens, but um, pretty much I am expecting Monday to be a red day. And, you know, it could be even more red than today, of course. But, you know, obviously when the time comes, we'll revisit it. But the point is, is the fact that decent chance that the downtrend has begun and the uptrend has finally been, uh, you know, broken. Uh, we also have the 21 EMA. So we can actually potentially uh, on Monday, maybe even come down to the 21 EMA, maybe around that 865-ish level, maybe find a quick little bounce off of that before finally making our way down to the blue line. So one option could be something like this. Um, so we can come down like this, find a bounce off the email, maybe come up somewhere around here and then make our way down here, maybe find a bounce here and then come up to like around 900 and then ultimately head back down. That could be something like that, you know, as an option. So of course, you know, we'll see. That's just one example. There's many ways this can play out, obviously. Um, you know, if I had a fortune like a, a crystal ball, I would tell you, but that's definitely a, something that I wouldn't be surprised. The bright side is we actually are uh, bouncing off the white line on the Bollinger Band. Now, just because we might cross under the white line of the Bollinger Band, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, it usually hovers it, right? Kind of, you know, like pretty much right on it, as you can see, kind of, you know, when we came over here, you know, we just kind of hovered it, whether it's down or above it, we pretty much magneted around it the whole time, right here as well, here as well. So I'm pretty much expecting something like that to happen as well. Uh, next week, and we'll see what, you know, what that forms from there. Uh, we are almost setting a bearish divergence. You can see, uh, 
even though the stock was lower here and the RSI was all the way down to around this kind of like 56 ish level, we are setting a higher low technically than this. However, the RSI is pretty much at the exact same level, potentially almost looking to cross under it. So this is potentially setting up a more a further, I guess, bearish divergence. So we'll see what that ends up forming into as well. So well above the 50 moving average, but of course getting rejected by the 200 today, arguably as well. Uh, so that's not a good sign as well. Uh, the 10 and the five, uh, well below the five, but the 10 is kind of, you know, we're hovering pretty much right at the 10. So we're losing some short term momentum and uh, the 200 moving average, which is more of a longer term kind of overall trend is still giving us resistance, even though we came above it and held above it. The fact that we double topped, like I said before, was kind of like kind of, you know, sussy to me. It was suspicious. I wasn't really trusting it. And this is why. Right. This is exactly why, again, I personally think the double top or the double bottom, triple top, triple bottom, those kind of patterns, very, very reliable uh, in my uh, humble opinion. So. Ultimately, guys, I am expecting uh, at some point, you know, potentially to overall come down to the blue line, which again will put us around that, you know, 850-ish, give or take 10 points level, and then maybe get a small little bounce from there. And then, you know, obviously when that time comes, we'll reassess the situation. Another reason why I was bearish, even though we kept holding above the 200 moving average, was because the spies, I showed you guys this several, several times, was kind of peaking, right? It was looking very toppy up here. So now it finally fell below. And it's obviously looking, uh, you know, starting to look quite bearish. The RSI, uh, over here, you can see setting a uh, bearish divergence as well. It made a lower low, even though uh, the stock didn't make a lower low, right? As you can see, back when this RSI over here was sitting around 61.77, that was when the stock was trading somewhere around 410 or not the stock, I guess the ETF spy, if you will. Uh, that's what that's when spy was trading around uh, 410, 411. We're sitting all the way at 422 and the RSI has already made a lower low. So ultimately, guys, you know, I, I do think the downtrend has begun. That doesn't mean we're going to go straight down. We're going to plummet down to Earth's core and never see the light again. Obviously not, you know, just as we go up. You know, with zigzags and, you know, pullbacks, the same thing will happen when we go down. There'll still be pullbacks in this case to the upside, uh, essentially the opposite direction, uh, you know, as, as is as usual. So that's kind of what I'm seeing, guys. But pretty much I personally am starting to turn uh, quite bearish. Um, ultimately, like in the long run, obviously short term, I'll enter bullish positions, but long term and especially entering September. Now that these trend lines and these trends overall, these uptrends have been broken, I am starting to get more bearish and I'm starting to get much more confident that, September and just fall in general can potentially be quite uh, quite ugly. So we'll see what that, what happens with that when the time comes. But ultimately, that's what I'm seeing at the very moment. So let me know what you guys think down below. Taking a very quick look at the weekly candle, of course, uh, it was looking quite good uh, at first, but then obviously, you know, we just completely sold off. So that's not very, very good. The monthly candle starting to look a little bit worse as well. It was looking really good as well initially, but naturally, you know, when we came down all the way from 940 to now sitting at 890, you know, that is going to make the candle look substantially uglier. And especially if we end the week somewhere, somehow at 880, if somehow we sell off to 880 before the market closes, that would be, you know, a pretty bearish candle. Actually, that would be an inverted uh, hammer, which is a bearish hammer candle, which will even further signal the fact that we're ready to reverse back down to the downside, which on the weekly candle seems like we at the very least want to come down to around 750, uh, like minimum is what it seems like. So again, we'll see what happens as it happens, guys. But that's what I'm seeing at the moment. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great weekend. See you guys on Monday. Peace.